Hello guys, welcome to another update video on my Unity multiplayer project. If you're new here, make sure to go watch all my previous update videos on this multiplayer project. You can find a link to the project's playlist in the description. And just like that, let's get right into what I worked on this month. The first thing I worked on was making these weapons look less plain. They have been needing color for a while now. The method I decided to use to color the weapons is a texture palette method. Basically how it works is you UV unwrap your model in your modeling software, in my case Blender, and then you overlay the UVs on a texture with the palette of colors. I basically make each section of the weapon have its own cube of color on the texture palette. This will then make it easier to have multiple different variants of color textures for the weapons, kind of like skins. If I decide to have some sort of skin system or customization system for weapons in the future, this will make it way easier to implement. The next thing I added is hit markers. A little X will appear at your cursor if your bullet hits a player. This will give the indication that you actually hit the player you were shooting at. It's also just a lot more satisfying to shoot now. Okay, I've added the third weapon to the game. This is the first sniper rifle weapon variant. I'm using the sniper rifle model from my previous game with some modifications. My weapon system is built in a way that it's fairly easy to add new weapons, but this one had a new feature that my previous weapons didn't have, and that's the scope. The scope is basically an image from another camera projected onto a plane with a crosshair on top. This way the scope camera can have a small field of view to give the zoomed in effect. Other than that, aside from texturing the sniper rifle, I just had to set some values make some animations, and we have a third weapon. Here is some gameplay of me using it. Also, the weapon system is definitely not perfect yet, as you can see by these interesting glitches that we found. I think new weapons are just going to keep getting easier to implement in the future as I keep improving the weapon system. So, the main thing that I worked on this month was trying to get the first basic game loop completed. This included three main systems that need to be put in place. A lobby system, a team system, and a game mode system. These three systems would then work together to make a game loop possible. All players would be in the lobby as the game mode settings are set and teams are assigned. Then the game would start and be played for a given time or until the goal is reached. Finally, the game would end and everybody would return to the lobby for the loop to repeat again. Now, this system would be able to work with multiple different types of game modes, which will leave this project open to whatever type of game I choose to make out of it. So I'm really excited to see where I go with it. Okay, let's look into these systems that I have implemented starting with the lobby. I decided to go with a world-based lobby. This is the current temporary lobby. It's just a small room with these two team selection zones and some UI on the wall to let the player know what the map is going to be and what the game mode is going to be. The admin or game master will have access to this screen where they can choose the game mode settings. Right now I just have two game modes, Free For All and Team Deathmatch. They can also choose what the map's going to be. They can then start the game when they are ready and you can see the countdown on the wall indicating that the game is starting. And just like that, we're now in the game. Let's go back to the lobby and talk about the team system first. Like I've said before, you can step into these two zones to change your team. You will then see that your username changes above your head and then the username in the scoreboard also changes. When the game starts, there are also certain spawn points for each team. This way they start on opposite sides of the map. If the player has no team when the game starts, then they will be assigned to the team with the lowest number of members. The same thing will happen if they join the server mid-game. Now, let's look at the game mode system. We already talked about how the game mode settings are set in the lobby, but once you are in the game, you will see that there is some UI on top of the scoreboard, which says what the game mode is, and what the team score is if it's a team based game mode. You will see that for the team deathmatch game mode, the team scores are the sum of all the team members kills added up. And currently, when the time reaches zero, the game ends and you return to the lobby. 
And just like that, we have our first very basic game loop. Mind you, of course, this system still does need a lot of work. For example, a game end screen showing who won and everyone's score should definitely be added next. This last thing I worked on is kind of technical, but I figured I would mention it for anyone who is interested. I have now implemented server-side token validation. If you are unaware what a token is, it's basically a key that proves you are a user that is logged in. Like I've said before, I'm using Firebase for my user login and authentication system. When you log in to the game, a token is generated for your user. Now when you try to join a server, that token is sent to the server and the server checks to see if that token is valid with the Firebase database. If it is, you can enter the server. Otherwise, the server kicks you out and won't let you in. This is basically a security feature that happens in the background, but it is important to have and was interesting for me to learn about and implement. I have gotten a bunch of requests to do a tutorial on Firebase authentication with Unity, and if I get some more interest in the comments, then I may end up doing one. Unfortunately, there isn't too much resources out there on Firebase with Unity, so I think I should share my knowledge on it to help you guys out. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below that like button. And I think that's it for this update. As always, I hope you like this update video, and I hope to see you in my next one. Until then, thanks for watching.